It will be many times throughout your career when you will need to have a frightening conversation, mm. whether you are asking for a pay raise, raising a complaint, or advocating for change. All of these conversations will require planning, execution, and accountability. Yeah, enter Tia Angelos, founder of Smart Women Society and author of the upcoming book, Smart Moves, Simple Ways to Stay Control of Your Life. Welcome to the broadcast, Tia. Hi, guys, so lovely to be on. All right, so let's talk about this. What is the book about and what inspired you to write it? Yeah, so Smart Moves is the ultimate handbook for young women that they need to help them navigate their lives. And it breaks down over 130 different topics covering money, career, well-being, and love into super simple tips and visuals so you can implement it immediately. All right, so you have a six-step process to tackle these types of conversations. Take us to step one. So the first step is all about preparing and practicing before your scary conversation. So it's important that you prepare yourself mentally and emotionally before you have one of these scary conversations at work. And that could involve researching, practicing what you want to say, working through any potential reactions from the other party, and even role playing the conversation with a friend. So if they say this and I say that, and if they do this and I do that, and if they ask about this, oh, I know, I got the papers right here. Here it is, boom. All right, so it's important to know the outcome we want, but is it okay to be flexible, though? Absolutely, and being flexible, it shows that you're willing to work with that other person and consider their perspective. But, of course, there's going to be situations where you need to hold firm on your desired outcome, maybe when you're trying to resign with your boss. So in these cases, it's really important to communicate your reasoning clearly and respectfully and still remaining open to discussion with them. All right, next you say that timing is everything. So what should we plan for in that respect? Picking the right time and place can make a huge difference in how that conversation is going to go. And there are a few things that you can look out for. So firstly, always try and book in a meeting with the person that you need to have the conversation with. You don't want to catch them off guard when they've left a meeting or spring, spring something onto them without any context. Secondly, think about if the person's in the middle of a really stressful time or deadline. In this case, it might be better to wait until that deadline's over before you have that conversation and avoid any unnecessary emotions. And lastly, always try and find a quiet and private place to have that conversation to avoid the risk of anything being overheard or interrupted. Mm. And even if you have everything you want, you, you know, you say you want to have written down, but the conversation can still take a turn that you don't expect. So what's the best way to react when you see, when something happens that you just don't see coming? Try and understand that other person's perspective and try and clarify any misunderstandings to make sure that you're both on that same page. And if the conversation has gone off on a tangent, gently redirect it back to that original topic and try and brainstorm solutions together to help you find that common ground and come up with a solution that works for everyone. Okay, and after finding a solution, you say the follow-up and the check-in, so important, but would an email be sufficient or should you do it in person? An email can be a convenient way to follow up, but I do definitely recommend following up in person or over the phone where possible, especially if the issue is complex or sensitive. It gives you a way better, more in-depth conversation, and you can learn about the person's emotions and feelings rather than through an email. What do things just get like go off the rails, right? <laughs> like like things just go totally sideways. Is it ever okay to just get up and walk out the room or like do something like wild, just, you know, mix it up? Absolutely. If things have escalated really badly, you can take a minute and say, I think we should come back to this another day and then schedule another meeting because sometimes emotions can get the better of people. All right. Good to know. Tia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and for more empowerment tips or to buy the book Smart Moves, visit smartwomensociety.com.